Today we are going to talk about a new way of getting high speed internet it sounds like is maybe coming to a couple of ships so I'm wondering if this is going to be something that we're going to see across more cruise lines. We are going to talk a little bit more about um, Chesky Krumlov, some things I forgot to tell you yesterday and I'm also going to show you what I got there for my souvenirs and then um, I've also got some just other good helpful cruise information for you if you're thinking of going on a cruise. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. And just as a point of reference for where we are in time, today is Tuesday. It's March 29th of 2023 and we are here in Vienna, Austria. So I wanted to, um, a couple of things. Um, first of all, let's start off with something new that we are seeing on some new cruise ships. So apparently on the Carnival Magic and the Carnival Venezia, there is going to be an option available it is showing up on the Carnival website and People's Planner for um, cruises that are starting towards the end of the summer um, to be able to use a device that makes it so that you have like a high speed um, internet hotspot. They say that the device, I don't have a picture of it, is like small enough it's to go in your pocket, but it only works when you're in port. It doesn't work when you're out at sea. And when I'm in port, I don't have a hard time usually getting high speed internet in most places, but I think it would be really valuable if you do or if you are, um, if you have work or something that you need to do that you absolutely have to have high speed internet and you're not sure what the phone service will be like or the data with the cell phone coverage that you've got, this might be really good. It's supposed to be about $45 to rent for a seven day cruise. And so let me know if any of you are hearing this offered on any of the cruises that you've got coming up, whether it's on Carnival or another ship. Like I said, it's the Carnival Magic and the Carnival Venezia are the only ones that I have heard so far that this is going to be an option. Um, moving forward, I am still so excited. Um, you might recall several months ago, Carnival Corporation announced that they are going to start installing Starlink on their different ships. Um, clearly it's not been on any of the ships that we've been on yet. Um, and I've not heard any of you reporting to me about it being on any of the Princess or Holland America ships that you have sailed on. But surely keep your eye out for it. And if you're on a ship and suddenly you notice that the Wi-Fi is just screaming fast, um, see it, ask them if they've got the Starlink. I am really excited that cruise ships are working on this. You know, ever since the pandemic happened people do um, often have the option to do more work when they're not always necessarily sitting in their at their desk in their office and so I think this is a really big deal when people can finally get faster internet so that they can travel more and do more and do more of their daily work when they also have the opportunity to enjoy travel so um, let us know what you're hearing about that another thing that I wanted to talk to you about here and I've got a couple of things First of all, sometimes occasionally here and there we talk about travel credit cards and um, Gordon and I have the habit, um, we are blessed that we charge things on our credit card to get the points or the miles, but we pay it off every month. We don't carry um, a balance. So I'm not advocating anybody doing carrying a balance on a credit card when I talk about that. I think it's really important to say that. At the same time, there are a lot of different credit cards that you can use when you buy your travel or um, like in our case, we try to buy everything in our life with it so that we can get um, the miles or the points, whatever card we're using. So I wanted to let you know and I want us to share. So if any of you have a travel credit card that you use that works really well for you, just let us know in the comments or send me an email and I can share it with everybody. The interesting thing though is you have to keep in mind that different people need different things and so what is the perfect card for one person is maybe not what another person needs. But um, I wanted to tell you one we're going to try and I might just be crazy if we have never spent so much to have a credit card like this in our life. But. Um, <clears throat> we decided to try it. So we have had Delta Platinum cards for a really long time, for years and years and years. And um, how much is the annual fee? $135, $150, somewhere right around there. Um, and But you get the companion ticket, you get um, you can get two um, bonuses. So like every time you spend $25,000, you get a mile for every point and like two miles um, for your Delta purchases. And then you also get, if you, once you spend the 25,000 miles, you get a 
10,000 mile bonus and you can do that twice a year. And there are other perks that go with it, like um, you get money back um, with, um, like if you do the global entry, they give you a credit back for that. But they've got this reserve card. And so I hope I'm not crazy, but we decided to try it for a year. And um, the thing that, um, well, there's a few things that I really wanted to try with it. It is 500 and is it $550 a year? It's 550 or 575, um, $550 a year here in my notes. So, um, and right now until March 29th, if you sign up for it, you get 90,000 bonus miles. So that was another thing that nudged me right along. Usually the mile bonus is 40,000 miles. And so that was really nice. You get complimentary access to Delta Sky Clubs and you also get a one-time guest pass. And so if you're traveling with someone and they can't come in, it allows you to bring them with you. You also get um, access to the Centurion Lounge and the Escape Lounge, which are in some airports. You get global dining access by Resi which is something that you can sign up for and you get um, like priority when you're trying to make reservations at certain restaurants. I don't, we don't do that really very much. We're spending our money on um, travel, like going places right now, but that's a perk if you're someone that does that a lot. Um, you get a status boost. So um, that thing I was telling you about, like when you spend $10,000, $25,000, you get 10,000 um, bonus miles. Um, on this one, you get 15,000 miles when you spend $30,000, and you can do that four times a year, whereas um, the one on the Platinum, you can only do two. And then um, you also get a medallion qualification, um, you know, the MQDs that you have to get for your status with Delta. You get a waiver on that. You don't have to worry about that. Whenever you buy anything with Delta, you get three times the miles and you do get that companion certificate. So the companion certificate you use to travel in the United States. And um, the nice thing is, is this one can even be used on first class tickets. So Gordon and I always use that if we're both going to the same place. I would say with our companion tickets that we got with our platinum card, we've noticed that it's gotten harder to use them. There's more blackout dates on them and the flights that they will let you use them on are um, not as desirable of flights. Um, when we were speaking with the Delta rep about maybe doing this, she said that the flight um, options are a little bit better with this. And the other thing that I really liked about it is it increases your chance of an upgrade. So if somebody is, um, if you're waiting to get an upgrade, like often we'll get upgraded, but um, lately I've noticed there's more people in front of us for upgrades. And um, she said, if people have the card, even if they have the same status as you or not quite as high of status, then they'll get the upgrade. And so um, that makes me sound awfully fussy. But um, we just were lucky to get upgraded on our flight from Atlanta to Munich, and it was really, really nice. And so, anyway, we're just going to try this for a year. I'll let you know. Oh, and they also do give you the money back if you do the global entry. They'll give, um, then you get the credit back so that you don't have to pay for that. So, anyway, I just thought I would share with you what we're going to try. I'll let you know at the end of the year if we decide to renew it, if it was worth that money or not. And let us know what cards you use and what you think is helpful that'll kind of help all of us. Um, and I am not an advocate of paying a lot for a credit card. I generally have a rule that I don't pay for a credit card. The only reason that we would do it, um, pay that annual fee with the platinum card is because we got that, um, that companion ticket. So it was worth it for us. And, and the free luggage. Oh, and the free luggage. You also can check your, your luggage is free. So that's just lovely. Um, I think that when you're traveling internationally, you get three bags and they can each weigh 70 pounds. And Pretty up sweet. to nine people in your party. Oh, and up to nine people in your party. Gordon should have done this video. So it's a really nice perk. And so for a long time, Gordon and I have each had one in our own name because if we were traveling with the children, as they were growing up and one of us wasn't going, especially like when they were in high school and we were going to things with them, then um, we had that perk. So anyway, that it pays for itself. Now, a couple of things about Chesky Krumlov and one of them I think is an important rule to live by. And I, um, and it really came to my mind as I was thinking about, um, one of you made a comment, um, well, two things. First of all, as we were going into the Czech Republic and we were crossing over, like they show you where the cross, um, where the guard stations used to be, like you're on the road and that's where they used to be um, as, you, as you were entering the Czech Republic and then on the way back out as you were going back to Austria. Um, it was just really amazing for someone like in our age group that remembers 
when the Iron Curtain was down and when people could not come and go there. And uh, so as we were going through, it was amazing like to think about where you were and that you could go there and see these places. And it brought back to, um, one of you said you felt like you were in fantasy land when you got to do that because it's like, who would have ever thought that we would get to go there. And so um, it reminded me that when we got to, we went to Russia on a cruise, we went to St. Petersburg in 2015 and spent um, an overnight there, it was really nice. But see, I thought I would get to go back. And we actually had that cruise book, those of you that have been with us that we canceled last year because we couldn't go to Russia after all because of what they're doing to Ukraine. And um, it really, yeah, as we were there in the Czech Republic, it came to my mind, you know, I would like to go back sometime, but how important it is to go when you can go instead of like putting it off a long time because if we had put off going to Russia, we wouldn't be going to Russia. Um, who knows for the foreseeable future when that's going to open up again and if it will even be the same place to go visit and so um go when you can go and go to the places that are so cool to visit and enjoy being there now while we were in chesky kum i also forgot to tell you that gordon um had a really nice lunch and we met a really nice we've met the nicest people on this cruise and so we got to eat with um, them and anyway so I wanted to tell you they have really good food there thoroughly enjoyed a nice lunch they have lots of places and along with that so tourism is really what keeps that city going now because it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and there's all of these um, so there's lots of shops and there are lots of restaurants and then of course you've got the castle you can tour but really tourism is what those people rely on and when you think of people that um, live there and who have lived there, um, I feel so blessed to be able to live where I have lived and to have what I have. And so um, I just, um, I always like to buy things when I go places and if I'm worried about people then I buy more things. I know, funny approach, but that's just my way. Um, we do get, Gordon and I do give money to humanitarian efforts. I just don't want to sound like I'm a ding dong, but <laughs> that I'm silly. But um, anyway, the thing, so I thought I would just tell you what we bought while we were there. Um, and then I'll tell you a couple of other things. So first of all, I got a pretty bracelet actually in a real jewelry store, so I'm very tickled pink with this. In um, Chesky Krumlov, they have a lot of things made out of amber. And as our tour guide said, the amber does not come from there. It does come from the Baltic regions, but to have amber jewelry is something that was traditional there. Garnets are traditional there, and then they also have this green stone that um, came when like a meteorite hit Germany, like a billion, like oh, so, so many eons ago. And as it hit, then it kind of like splashed and some of it landed over in the Czech Republic. So they also sell that stone. Um, so those are like some options of things you can look for when you're there. Um, I just went in a little shop there and I got a shirt. So I thought this was kind of pretty and it says Chesky Krumlov on it. There were lots of jewelry shops. There were um, some handmade good shops and then um, just some things that um, looked um, like, you know, your shirts and things. So I got us a couple of shirts and then um, a little mirror thing because I dropped my mirror and broke it on the bathroom floor here. Um, and then I got a couple of books because um, things that I wanted to know more about. And then this was kind of fun. These, this is chocolate made right there. And then um, this will make you smile probably. These are made in the Czech Republic. And so these are color pencils. These are for my grandchildren. These will stay at grandma's house and they can use them while they're there. And then these are prettier um, color pencils as well. So um, I got those. Alrighty, and then the last thing that I wanted to let you know is about passports. And so if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to our channel. We need to have you with us. We would love to have you with us. And so please subscribe. Now, um, the time that you need to wait for passports, 
seems like it's going up. Apparently right now the wait to get a passport is four months if you don't do the expedited um, system of doing that. Now I just talked to someone here on the ship that they needed to get a passport super fast and they were able to go to Philadelphia close to where they live and get a passport in one day. So I think we should pool our resources here and I'm going to find out if there is a place like close to where I live in Salt Lake City. I don't live in Salt Lake but that's the closest place that's a big city and so I'm going to see if we have got a place there and then let's start sharing. If any of you know of a um, location, a courthouse I believe is what it has to be, um, but I'll find out. Um, share if you know a place to go and get your passport that quick. You would actually have to go to the government offices that offer that service. But at the same time, be aware when you're booking your cruise that it can take a while to get your passport back. Of course, you can pay extra and get the expedited service, but really be aware that if you wanna go last minute, that you allow enough time to get your passport. And I would say that if you don't have a passport, go ahead and get your passport because it's just another step to being ready to go when you can go and you never know when that opportunity might come up you might think well it's too expensive right now well you don't know you maybe you will come across a wonderful deal um, something will change and you'll be able to go so get a passport if you haven't already and when you're booking your cruise or whatever travel you're doing make sure that you book it far enough out to be able to get a passport so wanted to bring you up to date on all that and i really appreciate all of you being here with me Thank you for coming with us. I hope that you find this um, interesting and useful. And I am going to talk to you a lot more about river cruises, but I feel like I wanna tell you these things about locations before I forget and while I'm still excited about it because we were just there. So like I said, please subscribe if you haven't. If you appreciate these updates, please give this video a thumbs up and I will be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.